Um, okay. <clears throat> All right, Chris, first question. Give us a brief overview of your business volume and your transaction value. Okay. Last year we did 288 sides for about 50 million, 49 and some change um, in volume. This year we're on pace to do right now about 320. Um, so we've got some stuff coming into pace that I think that the last quarter will push that up a little bit higher and put us back at the deal a day level we used to be at. Um, and then that should translate to around 65, 70 million. Now, when you say 288 transactions, how many buyers and how many sellers is that? Um, last year was 165 REO listings. Um, and it was 54 um, investor transactions. So that was, and I count an investor transaction, buyer, seller, whichever side they're doing. I just, we, we put those together as investor. Um, we did 34 buy sides, and then the rest were short sales. Short sales and traditional retail listings. Okay. Um, how is your business structured these days? Who, what are the, the, the details, the who, the what, the where? Okay. Um, right now we have a head buyer agent um, who has a showing assistant that works for them. What the head buyer agent does is they convert all the leads that come in if they're a buyer lead. doesn't matter if they're coming in from our IVR, from our website, signed calls. Hang on, what's what's IVR? Okay. Um, IVR is those eight, the sign writers you see on top of the sign. They have the 800 number with an extension people can enter. So when a buyer is out in front of a house, they'll dial that number. Um, they'll get that extension. We use also use it on some of our websites as well. So it's a number that they can call here recording about the house. If they want to get more information, they just push a button. They're immediately connected to our head buyer agent. Um, and so that's his job is, so so wherever that person comes to us from, um, if they're a buyer, he then will is the person who consults with them. And every buyer that works with us prior to having a consult, consultation will be pre-approved, pre not just pre-qualified. So we get them pre-approved. Um, they'll sit down with John, who's our head buyer agent, he will do the consultation with them, find out exactly what they're looking for, pull together some homes for them to go look at that match that criteria, and then set them an appointment with Karen, who is our showing assistant. Karen will go and show them homes. When they find one that they want to purchase, they'll come back and John will prepare the offer, negotiate the offer with the agent. Um, so that is, that's our buy team. That's how our buy team is set up right now. Um, we have a, a listing partner whose job it is is to look for take and, and service the listings that we take, the non-REO listings. Um, we have an investor agent whose entire job is to work with our investor clients and so she every day is out looking and preparing offers for investors, um, list those homes for them after they've repaired them, rehabbed them, whatever the case may be. Um, although a lot of them now are going into the buy and hold so a lot of times she's simply representing them in the purchase. They'll do their repair work for it and then they're on to the next thing. Um, so that's our investor side. Our REO side now, we have an administrative person that is that handles everything. She is licensed. Um, she's the person that if you call with an offer with a question on an REO, she's the person you talk to. Um, but she's that's a salaried position. Um, she's you know she negotiates offers to make sure it's the repairs are done, all those kind of things on all the REO properties. Um, we have a runner, so he's the guy who goes out and makes sure that the property hasn't burned down. Um, he's the guy who goes out and posts signs, puts lock boxes up, pulls lock boxes down, makes sure the circuit breakers are turned off before Smeco goes and turns the electricity on, makes sure all the faucets are turned off before they go and turn the water on, those kind of things. Um, we have a contract to close person, handles everything from, um, from the time that the property goes under contract, from the time that it goes to settlement. We have a um, Listing coordinator slash marketing person that will put together flyers, post properties to Craigslist, those kind of things. Uh, we have a, a, a head administrative person that all those admin people report to. Um, and then John Newman, who I think most people know now, is the general manager for the team that he's in charge of the day to day. So, how many people total do you have working for you these days? Ten. Ten. And where do you fit into this? Um, I provide vision, accountability, and write the checks. So I uh, so John is a direct report to me, um, and then I also I you know I'll coach with agents on the team as they need to. I'll help them answer their questions. I'll do some role play with them and those kind of things. Um, in addition to that, the growth of the company and where we're going that's that's me. Okay, so <clears throat> you're not in the day to day sales. You're not showing houses. You're not taking listings personally. No. My day-to-day -day now is um, I'm looking for talent. We're going to expand geographically. 
Um, and so my day to day now, I'm looking for who those people are. So then give me an overview of what a typical business day is for you and what your most important task in that day is. Um, I spend every morning um, visioning um, and every morning I'm thinking about what does the business look like, where is it going. Um, you know, I make a lot of notes actually, I journal a lot about that, so there's, so there's now four or five legal pads of just scribblings that would be incoherent to anybody but me, um, <laughs> of kind of where we're going. You keep by your bedside table with a little key that locks the cover on it. It's not locked. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Dear Diary. <laughs> um, and, and then the you know the rest I do have some other business ventures that will that I, I do spend some time on every day as well, um, and, but then it, the majority of my time is as I'm meeting people, um, opportunities. Anytime I can get an opportunity to get in front of people that um, may be a good fit for our organization, uh, that's certainly going to be something I'm going to take advantage of, um, because that's my most important thing is I'm looking for those people. So what would you say the biggest lesson that you've learned over the course of your career is? Um, find out what that one thing is, and then do that. So for me, that one thing is seeking out more talent. It's looking for those, and and it's funny. My definition of talent has changed as I get more talented people around me. Uh, that bar of what I consider talent continues to raise. So what is what is your definition of talent these days? Um, I'm looking for replacement talent. Um, you know, I think if you if you're in the business and you've read the Millionaire Real Estate Agents, you hear. Um, They've referred to cul-de-sac ta capacity talent, cul-de-sac ta and cul-de-sac talent. Um, capacity talent, you can, you know, they'll they'll grow with the position or whatever the case may be. Cul-de-sac, you can give them, um, this is your job, do that. They're never going to go from that. Replacement talent is those people that are big vision, big thinkers. Um, they get the big picture. They're constantly looking. Their vision's growing. They're pushing. Those kind of things. Those are the kind of people that I look for now. So. What would you say is the one piece of advice that you would give to a real estate agent who's trying to grow their business today? Okay, and for most real estate agents, that one thing that they need to be focused on is lead generation. You know, when I was managing the office and was teaching people how to get into real estate, I used to tell people all the time, the most important thing for you to do every day as a real estate agent is to go find somebody that needs to buy or sell a house. And if you do that by 9 o'clock in the morning, you can take the rest of the day off. Um, but that's it. That's if you're looking, to, if you're new in the business, or or your business is not where you want it to be, that's what you need to do every day: is get up and find somebody that wants to buy or sell a house. Nothing else matters. So, your growth and your position today, you're really looking for somebody, um, talent-wise, rather than looking for the lead. You're looking for somebody who can look for the lead. Well, I'm yeah, my. I'm still looking for the lead, only the leads I'm looking for now will lead me to talent. The talent I'm looking for are people that are uh, managerial, um, um, lead generators, and, uh, and big vision thinkers, yes. So that's, and, and on our, in our organization, that's everybody's, lead generation for buyers and sellers is everybody's job. So that's, you know, I'm still, from my sphere of influence to the team, I refer probably three or four deals a month. So just from people from you know, my past clients that reach out and contact me through Facebook or other agents I network with that are sending a business to the area or whatever the case may be. So lead generation is for buyers and sellers in any real estate industry is everybody's job. Um, and if you're the only person in, the, in your organization right now, then it's your only job. So where do you, where do you go to grow from here? As a real estate agent in Southern Maryland, you're probably the highest volume agent around right now uh, at 300 transactions a year. What is what is the growth? Where's the limit? Is is there a limit? Well, there's, yeah, there is a limit um, in a geographical area. But there's no reason why you can't go to the neighboring area. There's no reason why. You know, we've already got a footprint down now in the Keller Williams Millersville office and are working on that as a second location. Um, we're talking to somebody else right now about a third location of the Gouldy Group, and, a, and another person we've just entered into conversations with about a fourth location. So we're going to expand geographically. Um, that said, each one is going to be held accountable to, um, you know, being dominant in the market that it's in. Um, 
you know, what is, so if you say like Southern Maryland, what is the growth you can do right here with it? We've seen a team in Southern Maryland that have 25% market share before. You know, in early 2000, the big team in the local area had 25% market share before. So why, why not do that again? Well, I appreciate the time, Chris. Thank you so much. And we'll see you on August the 24th. Can't wait. Thanks.